everybody, welcome back to the Jimmy Nice Show. I'm going to run down the after action report from this past weekend's running gun that I did. I ran the 2018 winter running gun in Pawnee, Oklahoma. It's hosted at the Burial Mound Shooting Center. There'll be some links posted at the bottom to both of these. Today I'm going to follow a set of notes that I put together myself so that I don't miss anything. Uh, I want to make sure that I cover quite a bit in this. I'm going to do it a little bit different than I normally do my running guns. I'm not just going to post my GoPro video and I'm going to kind of talk about a few things and cover some things throughout the course. So before I get into this, first I want to throw up uh, the sponsors. Um, they're, uh, these are the folks that uh, really make this happen aside from all the other ROs and the match directors. I'm going to note the first sponsor that you guys see up there and that's the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. I'm going to take a minute to uh, talk about this and uh, let you guys know that the proceeds of this match, um, the majority of the proceeds of this match went to the Suicide Prevention Lifeline and uh, it was in, in respect for one of our extremely well-loved running gun family members lost his son last year and uh, his family, they lost their son last year to, to suicide and this match and uh, a very big part of this match was put together in, uh, in honor and respect and remembrance of Andrew. So uh, the link is at the bottom with the other sponsors. Uh, before we move on, I would like to uh, show some respect and uh, just give a moment of silence for Andrew. Thank you for that. All right, now moving on through our sponsors real quick. Uh, some of the other folks that uh, were part of the, uh, the picture you see here is Rise Armament. They're local folks out of Oklahoma. And uh, my good buddy Michael Ray at Paratus 46. I'll talk a little bit more about him in a minute and some of the stuff that they do. Uh, Project Appleseed, Double D Steel Targets, and uh, A1 Custom Signs and Targets. Uh, the Oklahoma Combatives and uh, Spearhead Transmission and their podcast and YouTube channel. I recommend you subscribe to them. All right, and of course, uh, Daniel Hinch, the co-match director with, uh, with Al and uh, his attorney, his, uh, his law firm. And a special shout out to, uh, to the property owner, owners, John, Susie, and Harold. Uh, we can't say enough about what you guys do and give for us to actually come out and do this. We wouldn't be able to do it without you and what you guys provide. And uh, so a big thank you. And last but not least, some guys that are really close to my heart since I've been doing this. And that's Stephen Mark uh, from S&M Barbecue. These guys are amazing. Trust me. All day um, Friday, all day Saturday, these guys out there running the grill and keeping us fed. It was amazing food. Thanks again, you guys. So, in the match, Al and Dan, they hosted and directed an amazing match. And uh, I figure I'll just get started right away and talking about, you know, uh, my run and the things that I encountered and experienced while I was doing this. So, uh, first off, uh, for me, a total of 42 plus hours of driving to get there and back. A uh, total of 2,700 so miles that I did. Uh, it was all worth it. Trust me. Love you guys, love being there, love everybody, all my brothers and the RO status that were out there with me. So thanks a lot, and uh, I'll get started right away. So first we talk about gear. Um, what I'm wearing, you see in the pictures here, is uh, I'm wearing an HSGI war belt. It's got some HSGI taco pouches that are magazine pouches for both rifle and pistol. Those are really awesome. It's got a Safari Land holster. It's a, it's a semi drop leg holster. It's only got one thigh strap on it. Uh, I've got a uh, blowout kit and uh, this is what I mentioned earlier when it comes to Paratus 46 with my buddy Michael Ray. He helped me put this together. It's got some really good gear in it. I recommend those guys for a lot of training. Go to their website. You can find it at the bottom. They offer a lot more than that. Uh, but Mike, thanks a lot for helping me put this together. I actually did two of these. One here on my war gear and then another on my go bag. Um, also ran uh, wearing the Salomon shoes. Uh, these were new. I got these for Christmas. They did really, really well, especially since I got the right size. All right, and uh, 
ran it, GoPro'd it with the hat. Thanks for the patch, Texas Gumdog. I love you, man. That's the Fellowship of the Foul. For all you foul filers out there, you'll know what that means. I attached the GoPro to this 511 hat in kind of a weird way, but it works really, really well. I basically took the mount off, cut a hole in the hat, and I drove the, the bottom of the actual GoPro itself through that hole and then just put a screw through it. I don't know if you can see that, but I found it on a YouTube video. It was online. Some other guy did it for his three-gun events, and it works really, really well. Uh, so moving on, the rest of this, my rifle. This year I carry the kel RFB. I have not run a uh, any competition whatsoever with this. It's a 308 forward ejecting battle rifle in 308, like I mentioned, and uh, it takes FAL mags, which I like a lot since I run the FAL. On top of it, I'm running a Trigicon TA33 3 power ACOG. It did absolutely great. I love it. And on this one, I ran a tab biathlon sling. I've run this on some of my other guns, and it did really well, and especially with this platform. It fit on my back, and I barely felt the thing being there. As heavy as this is, being 308, uh, the rifle did great. So my hat's off to kel -Tec and what you guys put together. A little short, compact piece of 308 gear right there. Uh, in the gun, I ran Hornady 308, 178 grain match. This is their Superformance line, and uh, it's Bowtail Hollow Point. I wanted a heavier bullet to buck the wind, especially on the 500-yard shot and it did really, really well. So uh, with this ammo on this gun, it's a gas gun, I have to run the gas wide open because this stuff is hot. So if you're gonna run this stuff in your gas gun, I recommend you figure out what the gas setting needs to be. You're probably gonna be running it wide open. All right, moving on. For the pistol, I ran the new Gen 2 Smith & Wesson m and 9, and uh, it did great. I love this pistol, love the trigger, love the grip. A lot of other folks liked it. So that was it for, for the gear and everything that I was kind of carrying during this. We get started. You know, so you get started running. Don't worry, I promise you in this video, I'm not going to show you two plus hours bit, of me running. I fast forwarded it. Just give you a little sense of you know, how it starts out though. You know, I'm, I'm running a little bit slow in this. I'm overcoming a knee injury I had for the last two or three months. And uh, so I wanted to take it slow, take it slow. <laughs> So I'll fast forward this thing in here a bit and it'll move through through the run pretty quick. And uh, that way you guys don't have some more hours on me. So this is that first 100 yards and the things that are going through your mind in that first 100 yards, you know, is, you know, okay, I'm in this. I finally get to start this. You get, you get motivated to get to this point about right here. You know, you're seeing that and you're like, okay, this is great. And, uh, you know, my legs are starting to warm up a little bit already, but they're still a little bit tight, especially warmer uh, we were waiting on the weather you know making sure everything uh, was good it had been 14 degrees a day before and, you know right about the time that you hit to here there it is you see it you see that long road once you see that long road it's demoralizing as hell I'm not gonna lie Al when I see that road every time it doesn't matter how many times I do it I see that road and and, and it, it's like a kick square in the nuts. So the first part of this, because, you know, if you've done this before, you see that road, you know how long you have to go. If you haven't done this before and you see that road, it doesn't matter. You're going to look up and you're, it's going to kick you square in the sack. So we keep on running, you know, at this point. Some of the things that go through my head during this first part of the run, you know, is it seems like it doesn't end. You're going through your head, oh, my God, this hurts, you know. RO day is lonely. Did I bring enough water? I have to piss again. Why the hell am I doing this? Nope, there I saw somebody. You're going, all these things are going through your head during this part of the run. You know, you're, and you're, you, you get to the point where you're just waiting to actually see some hardball. You get tired of running on that gravel. So, you know, you finally, you finally get to some hardball and you know what's coming up. Soon enough, there's a little bit of a course difference this year, you know, so as we're running along and, you know, we finally get into the woods and the stuff like that, and, you, you know, you're, you're running through the woods and, you know, some things like this, like the creek crossing and stuff like that, that you see, you know, it's more, it, you get excited, you're running through the woods now, it's a little bit different than that long road of hell, uh, you get to do the creek crossings, things of that nature, so it throws a little bit of difference in it, so I like that a lot. I don't know what the heck I'm thinking.
and I'm getting really motivated at that point to run along, you know, and as, as I'm doing this, you know, you get to points where you gotta go down into these ravines, up these ravines. So real quick, I wanna show you this short clip of what I call the dick move. Take a look at, you know, me climbing this little hill. Somebody put a rope out there to help folks out. Well, guess what the last runner did prior to uh, leaving that stage. All right, so there we go with the dick move. So you're moving along, you're through the woods, you can't wait to get shooting. You can't wait to get shooting. Uh, you're at this point, you're, you're like, you're excited, and then all of a sudden you get reminded that there's a little bit more than running and shooting. And you show up to the uh, the first bit of uh, of the uh, of the the second kick in the nuts, I guess you could say, and that's the uh, you know the barbed wire here. Check your gear. Check your gear. Check your gear when you get to the other side. I like it. Did you find my stapler out here? After you, sir. That'll work. Oh, come back, back a little bit more. There you go. You notice a young kid that was in that video, you know, you saw the guy that was dressed in the office space, I'm sorry, the falling down outfit, but then there was another young man that was wearing some uh, skinny jeans. We'll talk about him in a minute, okay? That's Bert, all right? We'll talk about him in a minute after we get done shooting. All right, so, you know, once you get done doing the barbed wire, you move through all of that, and uh, make sure you check your gear. You notice I dropped the magazine in that. You do some more running, you see a few former folks, show up the first stage of fire, one of the things you'll notice about doing the uh, uh, the running guns is you're going to have wait time. Well, that's that, that's okay, you know, and you know, it's not against your run time. You show up, you carry a stopwatch in your gear, you carry a stopwatch in your gear, and once you uh, show up to the run time, if there's other shooters shooting, you know, you start your wait time, and, uh, you know, they put that on your, on your run card, you know, prior to you shooting, so that that doesn't count against you. You shouldn't be held up because of other folks that are showing up there. Now, some of the obstacles that are on your runtime, yes, you might have to wait on some other folks like you saw I did, that's fine. Normally that stuff is, it's kind of a wash. You know, you end up pass, passing them anyway. But uh, uh, a lot of folks too, uh, they'll be courteous enough knowing that if a guy's out there and he's really competitive and running, let them go through the obstacle prior to you. They're on their runtime and that happens and everybody out there is really, really good like that. So, you know, you see here, there's a little bit of wait time. Uh, a lot of us just kind of catching our breath and uh, shooting the shit, you know, prior to getting up there to shoot. So once we get up there to your time of shooting, after all this wait, wait time, uh, this right here is the 10K only bonus stage one, all right? And it's called the face shooter. Stand by. I keep these. Fire. I held them in my hands there. Damn it. As you see him. Where am I at? Keep going. Give me three. And then one from the line. Red Hoss is take the target. Yeah. 
had to flip and said just hit. Okay. okay. 49 seconds. Good time. Okay, let's start heading back this way. You got more running, more walking, more climbing, more waiting. You're out there, you know, you're moving around, and you show up to stage one. And I say stage one at this point because the first stage that you just saw, that was the first stage for the 10K runners. The 5K runners didn't get to do that first stage that you saw. They come straight to what we call stage one. So that's why they're listed the way they are in this after action and on the site. So the next stage of fire is called Charlie's Out There. Stand by, fire. Directly in front of To your right. Right there? Yeah. Hit. Hit. The other one's directly in front. Is that it? Yep. We had some more running. We had some more waiting. Not as much waiting um, on the next stage. And uh, when we show up at this point at stage two, um, I'm going to pause after I show you my shoot because we're going to talk about stage two and what that is and uh, a little bit about what others on the running gun discussion, they've nicknamed this stage the dream killer. All right, so let me first show you my video and then I'll go a little bit more into the, uh, the dream killer and then the rusty trombone shooting box. Ready, again. Son of a bitch. Back up. Yep, flip them all back. Excellent, Jimmy. All right, you guys got to see me shoot that, and uh, that shoot was on RO day. So if you notice where the dueling tree was out in the woods, um, the stage itself got uh, it got it got changed by uh, one of our illustrious, you know. Uh, Lieutenants of the Indiana contingent a little sewing circle. They've got up there and he convinced some others to actually move the dueling tree About five six yards farther than they had initially set it up So um, after many of the ROs went out there that first day and it really kicked our asses um, The decision was made for competition that we'd move it back to where they had it staged. Well that individual he got I had the I had the joy of ROing this stage with Greg and uh, and with Bert. You'll you'll hear about Bert again in a, in a few. And uh, we were given the orders to move it back and make sure that the uh, shooting line was was placed um, for all shooters where it was supposed to have been and the dueling tree was at the correct distance, except for our good friend Rusty. And this is why we built the Rusty Trombone shoot box. On the fire command, Mr. Rusty Trumbull, you will not proceed forward to that. You will go to Rusty Trumbull's shoot box. You will stay in that side of that shoot box. You will pull out your pistol. You will engage all six of those paddles. You'll move them over to the left. 
You're going to move all six of those paddles back over to the right. Does the shooter understand the course of fire? I do. All righty. Is the shooter ready? Shooter is. Go. Clear her and make her start her wait time. When you guys get her. Oh, yeah. Now, Rusty smoked that. We moved that thing probably six or seven yards and back and into the woods, made it more difficult. But I'm going to give you a heads up. Rusty ran this twice because he ran the 20K. For the second run, we didn't get video of it, but we set that thing another four or five yards back and into the woods and made it even more difficult for him to sit. And again, Rusty, my man, he smoked it again. So my hat's off to you, Rusty. No matter how challenging Al wanted to make it for you, you still smoked it, and you still won. So thanks a lot, brother, for, uh, for keeping it real and uh, living the dream. And uh, so let's get back to me running. So after we got done with the Dream Killer and the Rusty Trombone shoot box, there's more running. And now you're back, and then all of a sudden it hits you. You're back on that main trail. You're back on that main trail. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Let me back up a minute. All right, you're not back out on the main trail. At this point, all the running we've done is uh, leading up to what I really wanted this gun to do well on, and that's the uh, long range. So without further ado, let me show you the video of the RFB doing its work at three and 500 yards. Shooter ready. Shooter's ready. Fire. It sounded like a hit. It was just to the left. Hit. Hit. That was it, right? That was it. Okay. All right. I don't know if any of you guys caught that or uh, or read the, uh, the course of fire before this, but I think I was given a gimme, and I went back and I watched it several times, and I should have been DQ'd on that stage. I think I shot nine rounds, and I should have only shot eight. So if the RO gave it to me, and you know, and that happened. Uh, you know, and you guys want to change the scores or whatever, uh, you guys are more than welcome. But being honest, I should have actually DQ'd that stage by what I saw in the video. I shot nine instead of eight rounds to make those hits. Still impressed with myself and still impressed with the RFB for making those hits. I'll just try to do it better next time. Like I said, I'm not out here to win this. I'm just out here to have a good time and test myself, test my gear. So, uh, again, it was, a, it was a great stage of fire. I love it. And, uh, and at this point, you know, I was motivated just to hit that thing with this gun, you know, a little bullpup, 18 and a half inch barrel, and uh, to be able to knock that steel at 500 yards. So, 
again. Uh, so we're back to back to running at that point, and uh, during this time, you're heading out. And then once you get back out there, you're on that main road again now. You're on that main road, kind of like I mentioned earlier. You're out there running along. You know, you know, you're on the hard ball. While you're on that hard ball, you know that you're going to be making that right hand turn. You're going to be on that gravel again soon. You're going to be on that gravel again soon. And I'll take a real quick break right here in a second because I want to show you guys something. I talked to you guys earlier about a young man that was wearing skinny jeans. Well, this is about the time. Let me look at this. It's right about. Right about here. There he is. See him on the left? He's walking a little funny. Yep. He's walking What's up, a little guys? funny. Good job. Because he wore those skinny jeans. And a little history of how he got the little story about how he got the name Burt was he showed back up and remember he's probably three and a half four miles into the 7.2 miles of running and he's already walking funny because his nuts were so chafed when he got back that he could barely walk and uh, he went to Al and he was complaining about it so Al gave him some Burt's Bees he gave him some Burt's Bees and he put that stuff on his sack and I guess he's feeling better because he was out there ROing with me and riding that motocross the next day. So my hat's off to him for running. I wouldn't run that thing in skinny jeans. But uh, that's just the little story about Bert and how he got the name Bert. So from henceforth, this day forward, be, be it known to all that that young man's name is Bert. All right. So back to the running. You're running along at this point. Now you're heading to the power line. Now... You know, you're over half done. You've done most of the run. The rest of the run is just short. You show up to the next stage. You make a left into the power line cut. Now I'm getting motivated. Um, at this point, I figured that I had done good. Um, and I get to the, uh, the gunslinger stage. And this was a lot of fun. This tested me both pistol and rifle. And then movement as well. So, uh, so here we go. Sorry. Is that not hitting you? There we go. That was it, right? One hit. get done with that one uh, the both the RFB and the pistol did really well you got a short run to the grenade toss which it, this was it was it was an add-in that uh, I, I actually enjoyed um, a lot of people think it's a grenade throw and uh, a lot of folks I guess overthrew the tar target and uh, it's a grenade toss folks so here we go do you need me to pull the pin no, all right <coughs> uh, I got that one in one more stage, so hurrah, sir, you have a good day. All right, once you get done tossing that grenade, there's a little bit more running going on. Uh, you're moving at this point to the uh, top of the hill, you know, the top of the hill. This is a stage that kicked my ass. This is a stage right here. I had the first issues with the RFB and uh, uh, come to find out that uh, it really wasn't the RFB as much as it was that I put that magazine that you guys saw me drop in the sand. I put that magazine in this and I think it caused it to hang up there as you see me uh, do this as I approach the VTAC board. Shooter ready? Shooter's ready. 
go. Shut the fucking barrel. Uh, God damn it. Also noticed too that I spent a lot of time uh, basically screwing around at that first barrel after I wasted time at the VTAC messing with the rifle and uh, if you didn't notice uh, in the video I, I got down in the sitting position I could see the target because the ACOG was looking over top of that blue barrel and then I shot the blue barrel so you know note to self keep an eye on your muzzle and uh, you know I'm glad it was a plastic barrel all right, so get done with that stage, and now at this point, which I really enjoy, um, because last year and in the summer we had to run to the to the tube. Um, this was a short run, basically around the mound and around under a fence, and we show up at a really exciting stage. I love the hell out of this stage. You know, I showed up here, and uh, and and Mike ran a great stage. So thanks again. Um, you'll notice that these bays, for those of you that haven't been back to Oklahoma since maybe a previous run and gun uh, they've cut these bays in um, to actually conduct multi-gun and three-gun events so here's the stage of fire us killing some hippies that was for you bob go Am I missing one? No. Okay. There you have it. 
That's the last stage of fire. Uh, this is where the GoPro died. Um, there's not much running left. It was literally a run from that stage right up to the house. You could see it. That was motivating because I'm not gonna lie. When I was running that last leg in the summer of last year from the tube, that the pipe that was way out in the uh, in the way out through the woods over the creek, you know, past Grandma's house. You know, I had to run all that stuff back. That was demoralizing as hell. But that short run from the last stage and that motivating stage, uh, I really like that a lot. So um, that's it for my uh, my run. Um, like I said, great group of folks. Um, you notice that you know, as if you uh, if you were there, you know what I'm talking about. If you weren't there and you've done these before, you know what I'm talking about, and I bet you wish you were there. For those of you who haven't done one of these before, again, like my other videos, um, this one is kind of detailed, talking about one particular event. Um, the next one up that we've got is uh, the heartbreak uh, at the Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge Sportsman's League in Eastern Kentucky, and I believe that's in about two weeks, and I hear, the he I hear it's a heavy round count. And then uh, we're going to have two in March. Uh, we'll have one again at Rock Castle, Rock Castle Shooting Center. That one's going to be hosted by, by, by my buddy Matt Stinnett. Yep, that's Matt. And, uh, and then uh, we have another one. It'll be the first uh, running gun that's going to be hosted at the Riverbend Gun Club down in Georgia, down in Dawsonville, Georgia. That one's going to be hosted by our buddy Bruce. So if you, uh, if you uh, see me there, give me a shout out. And uh, thanks again. Like I said earlier, the sponsors and everything about this, uh, this event and those folks that are in it, all the links are listed at the bottom. And uh, thanks, Al. Thanks, Dan, for putting together another great match. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys in the summer and again in the winter. Out.